You're listening to the Cliff Notes Podcast, a fan podcast dedicated to the Twilight Saga fan podcast. This is our reaction to Cliff Ravenscraft's reaction to the Twilight series chapter by chapter. Listen as we see it through Cliff's eyes. cover episode two so we're kind of going along with their episodes um episode two of the twilight saga podcast so we're going to be reacting to their reaction to uh chapters one through seven of the twilight book the first book of the twilight series yeah and Um, and we're also going to be covering a little bit of of an intro that they do at the beginning before they discuss the chapters they have kind of a quasi introduction again where they repeat yeah. a lot of the same things in the last episode. And with them, we'll be repeating the same things as, as well. Yeah, because um, we are here to give you accurate information on on what they're saying and how, how they're feeling. So, yeah, what, we do have to mention that the first half of the Twilight Saga podcast, chapter or episode two, uh, we were expecting it to be more of a, you know, they were going to be reviewing the chapters one through seven because that's what it says in the title. However, the first half of the podcast of that episode um, was just basically them talking about the movie and mostly complaining about how the movie was. Yeah, they didn't seem to enjoy the movie. They both admit to have they saw the movies. Um, they enjoyed the music from the movies. Yeah, they did. But. Um, but really, they don't seem to like them. They're complaining about scenes that are cut. They're complaining about um, what else do we have? They're complaining about the snow not being there. You know, these kinds of things. They complain a lot about how Mike was too uh, small of a character, but we'll get into that later. I do have to point out the fact that as of episode two, Cliff has only read up to chapter seven of the Twilight book, which if you remember from our first episode of when we covered their intro in their intro, he had read chapter, uh, I think it was chapter three of new moon. So we both have theories. Uh, what did you have a theory, Kim? Well, yeah, I mean, I have a theory, but we can say the obvious here. And that would be that he is lying. That that's the first thing that you could think when you hear somebody they say something that doesn't make sense like that is you think this person's well this person's lying and that's that's a possibility but another possibility is that that the introduction was added on later which i i I think is more plausible because in this episode he admits that they recorded these episodes or at least this episode in secrecy he didn't they didn't tell anybody that they were recording this in fact all that they did was they wrote on twitter saying that hey i mean we're reading these books and that's all so i i i believe that they recorded these episodes and then they added on an introduction where they repeated a lot of the things that were discussed in this episode making it a longer than necessary episode that is exactly what i thought i thought and i did a little bit of research into this and i and i found out that it's true cliff had read only chapter seven in the second episode and they added the first episode on later on when he had gotten to chapter three of new moon. Yeah. And so if you just read up to chapter seven, it's, it's basically you, you haven't even read any of the book yet because it, the book doesn't really start until chapter 13, as you probably know, chapter 13 is the first chapter that was actually written in the book. And they talk about this in this episode. They, they mentioned that that's wrong. It, no, no, it's it, it is correct. Uh, the uh, the author w- woke up in the middle of the night because she had a dream, like you, yeah. who had a dream to start this episode, yeah, or this or, or the show, uh, or rather. She woke up in the middle of the night and she wrote down. Yeah, yeah, a she story. did, and, 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 and that was true. chapter thirteen, confessions. Um, however, it that's actually chapter eleven from my memory. It was chapter eleven. Well, listen. But this information that I'm I'm getting 
is information I, I'm getting straight out of Cliff's mouth. Cliff can't be trusted uh, as well as I can. Let's just put okay. it that way. Okay. That's fine. Um, I want to get into this because uh, when I last night I was reading chapters one through seven of the Twilight book because I was just trying to I was trying to get into the mindset of Cliff, and it was after I'd listened to this episode of the Twilight Saga podcast, after I'd heard all of his reaction, I I read it again, and I was just really trying to imagine if I was Cliff, how would I how would I be seeing this book? Is it, you know, I just wanted to see it through his eyes. So I was reading it and I was reading it and I was just bent. My neck was just bent over. And I, well, when I woke up, I had this pain in, in my neck and it was shooting down my left arm and my left shoulder blade. And I went to the internet. I typed in WebMD and I, and I pressed all of my symptoms and um, what, what actually came up was I, I pinched my nerve and I've never experienced it in my life. My first nerve got pinched because of Twilight. And that just kind of brings us back to the, the discussion we were having as, or the, in the first episode about how Twilight is a physical experience. Wow. So the nerve that got pinched was in your neck, you said? Yeah, it's in it's in the uh, the spine in the spine of my neck. Wow, and that's interesting because that is where what what would you call these um, these blood sucker guys? Blood suckers. They're blood suckers. Yeah, that's where they would be. Um, they enter the body to get uh, to retrieve their blood. Yep. That's actually kind of interesting that we said blood suckers and we were talking about necks. I think, and this is just kind of an idea I'm throwing out there for maybe our next show, big show that we might do, but there's a podcast and it's called uh, Blood Suckers, The Girl's Next, Store, Next Door, and it's Next, N-E-C-K-S. That, and, could, be, that could be a, a great sequel to this. And it's a podcast about uh, just some teenage girls and they're just, as they read it, they're just kind of going going along and and talking about how they feel about Twilight and I love the name it's Girls Next Door and it, it's about blood suckers so I, I think we should talk about that and have a meeting about that you know yeah, so. that's a discussion we can have off air yeah um but what were we talking about so I'd like to talk about Mike oh Mike, yes, Mike. Um, so Mike, they mention him before they go into discussion into the chapters. They, yeah, they mention Mike in saying that he's not in the movie enough. He's not. A, in fact, Cliff doesn't even remember Mike being in the movies yeah. at all. He doesn't at all, which is strange to me because I remember him vividly. Yeah, I remember his face. I remember his eyeballs. You know, I, must be, say, I remember his cheeks. Yeah, I didn't remember him when they mentioned him, but I looked up the actor that played Mike. I, I looked up that actor, but what I thought was interesting about him was that his name is actually Michael. And I thought that was interesting. And just to like a bit of, of some trivia here, he auditioned originally to play Edward. And, oh, I, and I believe that they casted him as Mike because his name is actually Michael. And I think that they wanted to make it easier for him and easier for the cast because they don't have to be calling him two different names. They could, they could just call him Mike. Wow. That, honestly, I, I never thought about that. And that makes a lot of sense because I think he might have made a good Edward. And if it hadn't been for him being named Michael at birth, maybe he would have gotten the part. Yeah, this is really just a chance of just, of just some bad luck. Yeah, I mean, it's just not fair because of a name being discriminated against. But, I mean, I think we should definitely do some further research into that and bring that up later. I did, yeah. did want to mention this quote from Cliff. So he was talking about how Stephanie, his wife, 
really got into these books when she first picked it up. And um, they were on their way to uh, the Smoky Mountains and where Cliff's parents' lake house was. And she was just hooked. And he says, quote, I lost my wife that week. And I thought that was so powerful, like such a powerful way to describe how these books affect you. She said she lost six pounds in a week from reading Twilight, and she read until 7 a.m., which is, I I don't think I've ever done something like that, but that's wild. I'll just repeat, I mean, what you said, and that is, I lost my wife that week. Those words are hard to say, and How? Um, it, it must have been tough. Yeah. For him, not understanding anything about Twilight, and for her as well, you know, being sucked into this world, being just pulled in violently and not not knowing how to get out. You're just completely trapped for this entire week. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think she mentioned there that, that she read or maybe it was watched the movie multiple times in one day. Three times yeah. is she what did, I heard. She did say that her and her daughter together watched the movie three times in one day. This was actually this actually went on for months where she just was completely obsessed with this story of yeah. the bloodsuckers. I wish we could get more like information about the dates that these things happened in, in their family and the and maybe even the the location of the cabin. These kinds of things. Yeah. So that people I mean, we all wanna know, you know, where this stuff happens so we can go there, we can put up information for for tourists that are going to come visit for that reason we want people to have this information so if they're listening or if anyone if any of our listeners can reach out we need this information and That's so actually funny that you said that um i reached out to cliff ravenscraft on twitter and i asked him um if he could provide me some of the information of where his parents lake house is really he has yet to respond and understandable he is very busy producing some of the best content i've ever experienced other than twilight obviously yeah, for sure yeah, for sure but yeah i'm waiting on his response and i will assure you that if he does respond you will be the first to know and it will be probably one of the best experiences of my life getting a response from him yeah and anyone listening you know that just goes out for you too we will get this information I mean, we're working on it we're working on it and we're gonna put up plaques and we're gonna put put maps online for you can so you can find it take your yeah. pictures there and read your bring your own twilight book and sit there and read it in front of the house yeah we've reached out to historical societies from these local i mean from what we think are the local agencies and and yeah. whatnot we have everything set up so that these things can be made and these things can be done we just have to have the location so anyway before we move on um i wanted to talk more about stuff that happened before they discuss the actual chapters. One of which was I detected a bit of an accent in Stephanie's voice. Um, yes. She sounded like she was from maybe like from Georgia or maybe from Texas or something. She had this kind of a twang in her voice that yeah. I, I hadn't heard before. And it surprised me because when they were talking about their trip to Tennessee, they said we went down to Tennessee. So it implies yeah. that they're from the north. But I don't know. It, it, it's just not adding up. These things aren't adding up. Yeah, no, I noticed that as well, that she had a little bit of an accent. I noticed that too. Um, I, I wanted to mention, so Cliff said that something that was very interesting, he says that the podcast originally was not going to be free. Each podcast was going to be individually sold, and that's why it was this big secret project. However, you find the podcast now online for free. So I'm wondering what went wrong there. Why why aren't they charging? I'm assuming that they made back their money at least 100 fold. And at this point, they said there's no reason to be raking in the dough from this anymore. We can just let yeah. the folks let the folks have it if they want it. That honestly makes so much sense. Give back to the community. That's the kind of people that Cliff and Stephanie are. Yeah, and well, I mean, there's one thing about Cliff that um, maybe we should talk about that was discussed in, in this episode. 
of, of the Twilight Saga podcast, he mentioned something that really caught me off guard, and I wanted to bring it up. He uh, he basically admits to a crime. He says um, that he went to the library to get his audiobooks, his Twilight audiobooks, and that he burned them onto his home laptop. Yeah. And when you're when you're burning these onto your home laptop, it's with it's usually with intent to distribute. So yeah. I when I heard that I thought, oh my god, there there's no way that that this is illegal. He's probably distributing this. Oh, certainly. Well, not only is he distributing it, but he's distributing it throughout his reaction to it because he's he has published this podcast where he's just doing nothing but reacting to the book honestly i now that you bring that up i'm i just want to put a little disclaimer out there i don't know if all these listeners uh, all of our listeners could get in trouble for listening to us because we are actually going off of stolen content right now that Cliff yeah. has stolen and we're we're using his reaction to his stolen book and we are in turn distributing that out to all of our listeners so you know you might want to go ahead and google the the laws in your in your town uh, surrounding stolen audiobooks yeah i mean the us library will have more information on this the uslibrary.gov i i think is probably the website just type that into your browser yeah. and you'll discover you know the uh, the relevant information myself i have no fears of getting arrested or paying fines because the, this podcast that he created is is some of the best content around and I'm I'm willing to risk everything in order to listen to it and in order to react to it for you guys. Yeah. Anyway, just wanted to get that out there. I thought that was interesting, yeah, but listener. yeah. I'm still going to continue to listen to the podcast and we're and we're going to continue to react to that po- you know the podcast. Oh, completely. So at this point, I'd like to discuss the chapters that were discussed um, in this episode, unless you have anything else. No, to- I'm ready. Chapter one, Sight, is the name of that chapter. So they they discuss the fact that Charlie puts the snow chains on Bella's car, and Cliff really likes that because, as we know, Cliff is a family man, and he loves families. He loves dads. When a dad does something, he loves that, and, and that really stood out to him. The first chapter is really just fully about her going to school and, you know, Cliff has never experienced that, he says. He's never experienced going to school for the first time. Yeah, I heard that too. I, that that kind of confused me a little bit. I wasn't sure why he hadn't gone to school. What do you think? I'm, I'm not sure either. Um, could he have been homeschooled? This is something that we certainly need to look into. Yeah, it could have been a situation like um, the wild thornberries, where you're you're being, I mean, you're traveling around the oh right the world with your parents in an RV, and you're seeing the world from different you know, different perspectives and with animals and, and whatnot. And I think that's what he was probably going through. That could be a situation that he was going through. I I think that makes sense because I don't want to give any spoilers, but a lot of these episodes are from his car. And he's driving around. He's visiting different scenic areas. So, could could be possible. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're living in the life of a podcaster like they are, you have the mobility to, I mean, to continue a, a kind of a, I mean, a wild thornberry's life where you're traveling around in your car with your children and teaching yeah. them about about insects from the jungle. Right. You're 100 percent correct. I do want to say, he says about chapter one that he does not like love stories but he really enjoys how vivid the writing is and he relates it to video games in a way that really surprised me he says it's a full feature world that is being painted and that's similar to video games because he says that it lets him forget about his anxieties and he can just go into this world and he talks about a video game where he can have conversations with people start a new life run away do whatever he wants and he he compares the book to that which i found very interesting yeah that kind of added a layer of his personality to the mix 
it showed us that he's a gamer. Not only is he a gamer, he enjoys escaping reality. That's what he enjoys about a good book. He wants to escape his reality um, and his existence and his life and his ego and his, even his brain. And he wants to download, he used the word download, mm-hmm. into a new body. He's a computer guy. He wants to download into a, into a new existence. Yeah. Like the Matrix. And when it comes to the Twilight story, I don't blame him. If I could download myself into that story, oh, you best believe I would be in that story. I would be living it over and over again. Yeah. Uh, So that's all I had for Chapter 1. Did you have anything else for Chapter 1? No, I did not. Um, Chapter 2 is called Open Book. This is when Bella and Edward are basically their lab partners, and um, Cliff uses the word infatuated when he describes Bella. Oh, does he? Yeah, he calls her infatuated. That word has some judgment, I think. I I found it to be judgmental, and it it rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, I, I I didn't pick up on that when I was listening to the episode, but when you use that word, and I think about him saying it, Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does rub me the wrong way. You know, where I mean, who does he think he is? And and he also is criticizing Edward a lot in this chapter. He calls him selfish because he's yes. risking Bella's life for um, talking to her, even though he knows he's he's a dangerous bloodsucker and he's he's just not being very understanding. Steph points out that we're all selfish and that that seemed kind of like she was standing up for what I was thinking in my head, that he was being a little bit too judgmental of Edward and Bella. I believe that she was trying to stand up, you know, for Edward because he's the, you know, he's kind of like the sexy bad boy in the book, the guy who you want, if you touch your skin to him, electricity is going to crackle in between your, your molecules. And I think that she likes that about him and she's trying to defend him because of that. And I believe that's also why her husband Cliff is a little bit jealous and saying that he's selfish and things like that. Yeah, that makes sense. In in that kind of electricity, it certainly isn't something that's happened between the hands of Cliff and Stephanie because they have been married since they were, I, I think they said since they were 18 or something. So they've only ever known each other's touch. And, and they... And not to spoil anything, but they were virgins when they met. So that would definitely make somebody a little bit jealous. No, I did not know that. And for those listening who didn't know that either, I apologize on behalf of my co-host here for revealing that information. There's lots of people, Melanie, who are listening to this podcast, like people who are listening to the Twilight Saga podcast, that are on the journey with us. Or, you know, They're listening to that podcast with us. And they don't want things to be spoiled. Just keep that in mind as, as we're going forward, you know, that we need to keep things about chapters one through seven or episode two. I, I apologize, but I, I just honestly, I thought that that little tidbit of information was very important to what we were discussing. So that's my rebuttal to your criticism. Okay. Well, thank you for that rebuttal. <clears throat> so when okay. the car almost hits Bella and Edward stops it, this is this is the point in time when Bella meets Dr. Cullen for the first time. They discuss how Edward asked Bella to keep the secret how he was he basically pushed the van off of her and he wants her to keep the secret and keep her mouth closed and Cliff says he thinks that Edward is a total jerk because he promised that he would explain to her uh, later how he pushed the van off of her as long as she kept her mouth closed. And she did, and he never revealed the the secret to her. And, and Cliff says he's a total jerk for doing that. Yeah, that really rubbed Cliff the wrong way. He talks about this extensively in this episode. He did not like that at all. But when you think about it in the context of Cliff's personality, like I said, he's just looking for things to nitpick about Edward because of the jealousy that he has for him and for, you know, his sharp teeth, his sparkly skin, his eyes on fire, which is a, a right. theme of this episode as well. Oh, and, yeah. And that will probably be the intro music to this episode. 
Um, or if not, maybe the outro. We'll for those listening. We'll see. Yeah. Speaking of music, he they do go into a little. They start playing that song for a little bit, and then Cliff says that he hears music in his head as he reads this book, and then he puts on a little clip from that Iron and Wine song. A flightless bird american mouth and we listen to that for a little bit and we can just picture as cliff is reading this song he can hear it in his head which is actually kind of interesting i've never had that happen to me and i'd love to be able to experience something like that so that i know what it's like to be cliff but unfortunately i i just don't know how to make that happen yeah being able to listen to music in your head would be a incredible skill and i if it will be excellent to learn how he, you know he honed that skill, or it will be excellent to learn that. And I don't know if it's a thing you can teach. I I have just thought of something very interesting as you were as you were just saying that the fact that he can listen to music in his head whenever he wants as he's reading is almost like one of the the powers that these that these bloodsuckers have as. Uh, just just like Edward, who can hear the voices of people's thoughts in his head, Cliff can hear uh, this music in his head as he's reading. Yeah, that's that's truly a superpower, which is one of the things that he mentions earlier. He's interested in the superpowers that these guys have. Maybe he that's why. That. Maybe he's interested because he has a superpower of his own. Well, and so I, I actually I would like to pose a question to the listeners right now. If Cliff was turned into a vampire, what do you think his superpower would be? That's a good question. I'd like to get some Twitter responses from that. Yeah. Um, what what you guys think? I don't know. I think maybe it would be putting music in other people's heads. Yeah, let's tweet that. Let's tweet that out now. So anyone listening, just get on the internet and let's get a tweet going about this about you know his superpower and you're saying you think that he'll be able to input music into other people's minds that's what i think what do you think he might i mean it's just a kind of a fantasy but what what do you think cliff's superpower would be i think it would be to be able to download his identity into um any kind of a android or something like that that he could use to move around in other places and then when that android lost power he could go back into his body and, and just grab another android interesting interesting so he can go into uh bodies of uh robots but that's it and then only until they lose power did you have anything else for chapter two because i I noticed that they skipped pretty much right to chapter 5, which was actually Cliff's favorite chapter so far. He says um, if this chapter was in the movie, he would have been sucked in. Sucked in? If This is the chapter that they're pricking the fingers in in the classroom. Yeah, and then they comment on how this is unlikely to happen in a classroom. Which is true. I've never seen it done. Not that Cliff would yeah, know is... because of his upbringing with the RV, but he's right. He's absolutely right. Yeah, he was right, but he made it up. But he was right in the end. Yeah, certainly. So Bella faints at the smell of blood, not the sight. And Cliff says that that excites him. Um, and it also excites Edward because Edward is very curious about how she can even smell blood. I don't know. Have you ever smelled blood? Um, you know, if you put it up close to your nose, you can yeah. smell it. I think, I think maybe if you tasted it, you would mistake that for, you know, for smell. We've all tasted our blood. Yeah. Don't, don't act like you haven't, folks. You've tasted it. I know I have, and, and it's not from anything weird. It's just from, you know, you, you'll be going along just chewing on your lip and, and you'll accidentally chew it too much and you'll taste that blood in your mouth and, and it does kind of taste, when you taste things, you can kind of smell it. So you're right. Bella says that it smells like rust and salt, which I I don't know what salt smells like, but that's interesting. See, that's where you caught her in a, in a, in a lie, because you can't, you can't smell salt. You can only taste it. So she was tasting blood and thinking that she was smelling it. It had to be, because... 
I mean, salt doesn't even really have a taste, if we're being honest. It just has a sensation, I feel like. It makes things taste, you know, more salty, I would say. Yeah, more strong or something like that. I I don't know the exact mechanisms of salt, but... Okay, well, in, well, like this episode of the Twilight Saga podcast, at, at this time, this is when the episode starts to kind of spiral out of control. They Completely! Yeah, they've they've only mentioned a couple chapters, yeah. and then they just get off topic. You're talking about other kind of shit, and he says, yeah. So he says that he that he fell asleep. That he yeah. fell asleep while he was listening to this, and he missed some stuff that that was discussed in the episode. This he stuff missed was he he missed the part that Bella, when she tripped and fell over and dropped her books, um. So and he said he said he missed that part because he was doing something else. Yeah, and then he goes on on to say that he missed it because he fell asleep. Yeah, but then he says later that he likes to listen to these to this audio book mm-hmm, mm-hmm. while he's jogging. Uh, well, he says while miles. he's while he's doing his three to seven miles, and he says Stephanie won't come along and read it to him as he's doing those three to seven miles. So that's why he has to use his stolen audio book. Yeah, it's easy to get this mixed up because he. It's easy to say, am I sleeping or am I jogging? Well, they're both, they make you feel pretty similar. So I understand, you know, if he didn't know if he was asleep or if he was jogging. But either way, he was distracted. He didn't know what was going on. And and then the episode just kind of, yeah. just kind of peters out a little bit. I mean, he has three different reasons for why he wasn't listening. And they're all completely different reasons. And I don't know which one is the truth, but I'm I'm determined to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Well, I, well. After he after he discusses this business, he goes on to play the audio book music, which I agree with him is fantastic. It has a great, it has a head nodding kind of a bass line that just makes you want to. It it just makes you just want to rock out, you know. Yeah. Cliff has good taste in music. We can say that with certainty, because he has he has the entire Twilight soundtrack downloaded. Is that right? Yes. And I hope that wasn't spoil. I hope that wasn't a spoiler. But you know, it's this is hard for me. I've listened to every one of his uh, episodes right now, and I I know so much about him. It's hard not to blurt out some spoilers here and there. So uh, I guess this is another disclaimer. I might be spoiling some things accidentally because I know so much about Cliff. I mean, we'll keep it down as low as possible. But if if something slips out, it can't be controlled too much. Yeah. So is there anything else you'd like to discuss? Nope, that was it for for chapter or for episode two of the Twilight Saga podcast. Yeah, and this is not the Twilight Saga podcast. No. This, this is, is a, called Cliff Notes. This is Cliff Notes. Our podcast is Cliff Notes, and we are reacting to the Twilight Saga podcast. Our podcast is all about the Twilight Saga podcast because we are just obsessed. Yeah, but this podcast is not called the Twilight Saga podcast. No. If you're getting confused because we're mentioning... This is called Cliff Notes. We are Cliff Notes, and we are seeing things through Cliff's eyes. And this is that's our goal, and we're hoping that you'll be able to see things through his eyes, too, through listening to us. Okay, and with that, I think we are out. We will see you guys with the next episode where we cover uh, episode three of Twilight Saga podcast. And that is when Cliff and Stephanie dive into chapters 8 through 12 of twilight so we will be back with episode 3 of cliff notes next time 